Mayweather, and Aram. Floyd has been associated with Aram and Top Rank since 96. Floyd stated the worst decision he's ever made was signing to Top Rank, but was it? Especially his early years, it was clearly not. Floyd was caught in a situation with manager Jay Prince, where Prince's goonies, armed with baseball bats, stormed the gym Mayweather was in, slapped around members of his team, demanding Mayweather to pay Jay Prince the money he's entitled to, or else. Sit your five dollar ass down before I make change. Then to leave the bloodstained gym with everyone shook to what happened. Clearly intimidated by these actions, Floyd called Bob Arum right after these events took place and set up a meeting. In the meeting, Floyd told Bob Prince wants the money for his upcoming fight. Bob said he will write Prince a letter of credit. Floyd replied, Prince does not do letters of credit. You better send him the cash. Bob, who has been in the business for a very long time, knew there was something seriously wrong and did not want to escalate it to where he's now part of it. Bob wrote out a check for $600,000 and sent the money right over to Prince. Bob saved Mayweather's life that day. The relationship soured when Mayweather was trying to chase a mega fight with Oscar De La Hoya. Do you think this fight will get him into the ring with you? Oscar, if Oscar De La Hoya want it, you know, he know my number, he know how to call me, he know how to get in touch with me. Only thing I'm gonna do is keep racking up victories and beating the best. If Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya said that he wants the best, he wanna leave our fight the best, bring it on, not tax that ass too. Besides the large amount of money on the table for this fight, this fight meant a lot to Floyd. A win here will give him the respect in the sport that he felt like he deserved. But this is not what great, great fighters would be doing. Especially you get a guy you can hit with a right hand anytime you want to. And you would be running from him, no way in the world. You would sit down and knock him on out. He felt like Bob was holding him back and his window to get this fight made with Oscar was closing. Aram offered Mayweather $8 million to fight Antonio Margarito in 06. Eyes on getting a De La Hoya fight made, Floyd explored his options asking if he can fight Miguel Cotto or Ricky Hatton for a guaranteed $10 million. Aram was only willing to guarantee him $7 million. Floyd also asked for a guaranteed $20 million if the Oscar fight is made. Bob had no interest in making that fight happen. You were in no position to challenge my expertise. So Mayweather explored all his options and was shut down on every one of them. So he did what Oscar did and bought out his contract with Top Rank for $750,000, which this high and risky investment paid off well. Floyd, a free agent, was able to seal a deal to fight Oscar De La Hoya for a guaranteed $20 million. The same guaranteed $20 million that Bob shut down. Talk about cutting out the middleman. Hatton fight, Floyd did not get his guaranteed $10 million, but he still made a million dollar profit from Bob's original $7 million offer. Floyd made $12 million in total against Ricky Hatton. The same with the Cotto fight too. In total with both fights, Floyd made an extra $2 million. You a hell of a you say hell of a you're a legend. Billy Joe Saunders and his fans. Saunders went on a six month rant and roast on social media and to the press that Canelo was a cheat and he should be banned from boxing for life. My opinion on that is he's a cheat, a drug cheat, and uh, money's covered it up. So uh, that's my opinion on it. He's still a cheat, always will be. And um, everything he's done in boxing, in my, in my eyes, has been evaporated. Saunders will go on to failing his drug test in the build up to his bout against Demetrius Andre for a banned performance enhancing stimulant, Axial Free. Axilofrine was found in the system. Ox can be used to burn fat and lose weight. It also boosts focus, endurance, heart rate, and oxygenation of the blood. Freddie Roach and Alex Ariza. Manny's most ferocious years above, above super featherweight was contributed to Ariza's conditioning as well as Amir Khan's inherited abilities to withstand punches better and a motivated Chavez Jr. So what went wrong then? It was more of a he said, she said situation. Freddie says he was a sketchy character and brought up the notorious Ariza shades. And for Ariza, it was more about the mismanagement of Pacquiao and his distaste towards Bob Arum. 
Ariza was fired during the camp to the first Bradley fight. Due to Pacquiao's request weeks before the fight, Ariza was allowed back into camp. After the Bradley fight, it was a turn of their relationship. Ariza was later fired summer of 2013, and in the ultimate twist to the story, Ariza becomes the strength coach for Brandon Rios, Manny's opponent in his comeback fight. The drama was real, and during fight week, it all broke out to the public for millions to see. What we have is just the worst of everybody showing the darkest sides of their souls. We couldn't sweep it under the rug. We had to address it. We had to show it, and we had to show both sides and be objective about it. So the craziest thing about this was it was the night before the fight. It was in Macau, China, halfway around the world, and Khan had to get all his footage back into us to use. We had less than 24 hours to get this thing into the cut. But we also had to lose about five minutes of content within the show to make room for that segment. Joe Lewis and America. Joe Lewis was a hero to America when the country needed him the most, beating Max Schmeling in one of the most politically fueled matches in boxing. Well, Brooklyn, uh, the neighborhood that I lived in was practically all Jewish. And we were all hoping and praying that uh, Joe Lewis would kick the shit out of him. The streets were eerily quiet, no cars. It was like a scene uh, after the Adam bomb, you know. And, and this was duplicated in every large city, by the way. But when Lewis needed his country to help him, they turned their back. What the American government did to Joe Lewis, after all he did for his country, even serving in the military during World War II, was absolutely disgusting. Nonetheless, Lewis gave up four years of his prime along with $100,000 purses in exchange for a soldier's pay. Lewis's dedication to his country and to the cause has to be seen as, as ironic. I mean, because they, you know, they haven't done anything for him except exclude him and segregate him. In an act of cruel irony, the very government that had made him a symbol of American democracy now hounded him for tens of thousands of dollars in back taxes. Luis for years was bullied by the IRS, which the amount he owed looked like he could pay off, then to be way out of his hands due to ridiculous penalties that just multiplied what he owed. America will make Schmeling, a white German with ties to the Nazi party, a millionaire. And Joe Lewis, who was the symbol of democracy, will end up with nothing. With problems with debts, and also health problems as well. There was one person whom Lewis had helped in the past that truly considered Joe as a friend, the one and only Frank Sinatra. About 35 years, and the uh, first time I ever saw him, of course, I've been cheering ever since. None of Lewis's admirers showed greater affection for him than an old friend who years earlier had turned to Lewis for a favor. Pacquiao and Aram. Pacquiao has been with Top Rank since the early 2000s, Though it has been an up and down relationship due to Pacquiao trying to sign deals on the down low. Like in 2006, Pacquiao signing to Golden Boy Promotions. What held him back was him trying to get a rematch against Eric Morales. Golden Boy did own a percentage in Pacquiao's top ranked contract. And Bob also promised to promote and have his fights win or lose against Morales in Macau, China. Which that did not happen till 2013. Relationships soured in 2018 when Pacquiao didn't get paid by Top Rank for TV usage rights of the fight being aired on ESPN Plus against Lucas Matisse in which Pacquiao sued Top Rank. After things were settled, well I, I think they were, in October Pacquiao does the most unthinkable thing that left the boxing community shocked. He signs with Bob's biggest rival, Al fucking Heyman. Welterweight mainly occupied with Heyman fighters. This is probably the most realistic move by Manny if he wants to get a big fight made. Sergio Martinez and HBO. Just going by every Sergio Martinez fight on HBO, they praised him a lot, which made you think HBO favored Martinez. But behind doors, I am not sure they did. In 2011, Sergio Martinez's WBC mandatory was Sebastian Zvik. Martinez and his team had no problem fighting Zvik, but HBO did. HBO 
goes out and says, this is not a competitive fight. It's a big guy not deserve it. Quoted from the HBO president, he is not worthy fighting on HBO. He is not worthy to be on our network. They pretty much force Martinez to fight an opponent of their liking, which was Sergey Zinzurek. WBC knew the situation, though Sergey was an undefeated contender who was much more qualified since Vic. They didn't give him the clearance for the fight and they still stripped Martinez. Let's just pause here. We have seen in countless situations with the WBC allowing this for the absolute worst reasons with Danny Garcia, Deontay Wilder, and a prime example, Adana Stevenson, who of today in the year 2018 has not fought a mandatory opponent since 2013. Holy shit. For the people seeing this video later down the road, Stevenson makes his first title defense since 2013 on the day of Wilder Fury. Back to the story now. So Martinez is stripped of the WBC title and goes to fight Sergey for a BS diamond belt title, completely dominating him. Now for Martinez's vacant title, his vacant WBC title, guess who is fighting on HBO? Take one fucking guess. Chavez versus Vic. How, when, why? HBO goes and says Vic is not worthy of fighting on HBO to he is worthy. If HBO did not play a role with the matchmaker, Martinez fights Vic, then fight Chavez. Did HBO literally conspire with the WBC a plan to get Martinez stripped of the title, then to pretty much give the title to Chavez in a low risk bout? Conspiracy? I think not. I'm sure that tomorrow will be justice with Sergio Maravilla Martinez and he will be the champion. No, moment. No hay injusticia con Sergio. After media backlash and protests at the WBC convention, the WBC ordered Chavez Martinez to be made. Been loyal to the WBC. If you don't protect this man now, then the WBC stands for nothing. Well, if that's what you think after 50 years, I'm so sorry. I'm, what am I I'm saying? Very sorry. No, I'm not saying that. I expect the WBC to do the right thing as it usually does. This man is your champion. This is the best middleweight in the world, and no one on the stage and no one in the world thinks otherwise. Lusak, can you please sit down? Most boxing fans didn't know the real animosity that Martinez had towards Chavez and the WBC in the build up to the fight. By all means, the hate was real and it showed throughout the whole fight. In the 12th round, when Martinez was dropped, he could have very well held and survived easily to the end, but he didn't. He did not whatsoever want to give Chavez any benefits of saying, I could have stopped him. And Martinez finished the fight his way, throwing back toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chavez. Revenge is better served cold. And on top of that, thanks for watching my list of the biggest betrayals in boxing. For a follow-up video, be sure to like, and if you're new, subscribe. I'm Malthus Hancho, and I'm out.